What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I've been running iOS 13 beta 5, which of course is the same as public beta 4 for all of this past week. And I wanted to give you guys an update on how the software has been running on my iPhone 10s Max, my iPad Pro, my iPhone 10R, and also the iPhone 7. So I've used my iPhone 10s Max and my iPad Pro every single day since the release, but I've also mixed in some usage with the iPhone 10R and the iPhone 7. So I just wanted to share my thoughts, talk about some of the features that I missed in the original video, the battery life, the performance, all that fun stuff that you guys care about. So before we get into all the nitty gritty details about the performance, the battery life, and the bugs, let's talk about some of the new features and changes that I did not cover in my initial What's New video. So a lot of you guys have actually been requesting videos on the iPad Pro. So we're going to talk about some iPad Pro features first. I'm just going to casually sit this right on top of my iPhone screen without a screen protector. But anyways, the first thing I want to talk about is slide over. So now with slide over, we now actually have the ability to swipe over in two different ways down here. So you can see I have multiple applications open and we can slide slide both left and right instead of just one direction like we could in previous beta versions. Also on the home screen, you'll notice that I have three pinned favorites right here, and that's because you can now pin more than two favorites. You can actually have, I believe, an unlimited amount of favorites right here in the pinned section. So before it was limited to just two spaces, but now as you can see, you can just move them up there and have multiple spaces for your favorite, which is pretty nice. So now if we go ahead and change our appearance to dark mode in iOS 13 on the iPad and we connect our Apple Pencil, you will see that the prompt at the top is actually now in a dark mode shade as well. So before it stayed in light mode, it was like that light gray color, but now when you connect it, it actually adapts to the dark color as well, and you can see it right up there. So if you have a mouse connected to your iPad, you now get an option for a smaller mouse pointer. And I actually thought that the mouse pointer size was fine beforehand in beta four, but the smaller one in beta five is definitely much better. So now let's move on to the iPhone. Let's get the iPad out of here. Those are all of the new iPad based features here in beta five. But of course, all the features in iOS are also present on iPadOS, but I just want to show you guys how they work on all the phones as well. So the first thing I want to show you guys is more about the share sheet adjustment. So the actions inside of the share sheet. So for this, we're going to go into music and we're going to click the three dots right there. And you can see now I have the add to playlist, view full lyrics, create station, all of that at the very top now, whereas before it was way down in the menu. And that is thanks to the new feature down here called edit action. So now you're actually able to add favorites to the share sheet. And this has grown already to be one of my all time favorite features in iOS in general. This is huge. It seems very small, but it saves a ton of time and makes you not have to sit there and scroll down and wonder where the add to playlist button is. You know, you kind of get through all of the fluff like love, suggest less like this and things like that, which I never use. I'm able to remove and just add the actual actions that I use to the top here in favorites. So for instance, if I shared a lot of things inside the music application, I could just click the plus right there and it adds it right there. And you can see you can move around as well. And you can see it's sectioned off by music specific actions and then also other actions right here. So like view album, add to library and things like that. You can configure to your liking, which is actually a really awesome feature. So messages now shows when a message has been sent with Siri. So you can see here, I told Siri to say a certain thing and send this message. And you can see at the bottom there, it says sent with Siri with a little learn more button right there that you can click. And if we go into our accessibility settings and scroll down to accessibility shortcut, you can see we now have the option to have dark appearance as a shortcut in accessibility. So you can triple tap the power button to activate dark mode and then activate light mode if you want to turn it off, which is pretty cool if you switch between those two a lot. I personally keep mine on auto, so it's not a big deal to me, but it is cool that you now have dark mode as an accessibility shortcut. And if you go to settings general and go down until you see keyboard, you can see that we now have delete slide to type by word. That's actually been renamed here in beta five. It was delete undoes slide, and now it's been renamed to basically give you a better explanation of what it actually does. Now we talked about a couple of things being removed in the initial what's new video, and there's actually something else that's been removed here in beta five, and that is actually inside of FaceTime. And you can see there that the attention correction feature has been removed. So if you guys remember, that's the feature where it makes it look like you're looking at the camera, even though you're looking at the screen. So for some reason that's been removed here in beta five, I'm sure it's going to be coming back, but it has been temporarily removed. So now when you 3D touch on an application down in the dock, you have the option to rearrange applications, whereas before that was limited to just your springboard applications, not the dock. And there are several other changes here in iOS 13 beta 5, aka public beta 4, but I'm not going to go through every single one of them. Now, one thing I will say that's a big difference from beta 4 to beta 5 is that the multitasking crashes have been fixed. So a lot of times when I would be doing something like when I would copy and text paste, and I would go between the app switcher like this down below here, 
I would actually crash my device. So iOS would just crash, it would respring when I would just be multitasking, going back and forth using the bottom bar here on my iPhone XS Max. And it happened, I, I don't wanna say every day, but it happened numerous times, like at least five or six different times. And it always happened when I was multitasking using that bottom bar. So I've been using iOS 13 beta 5 here and that has not happened one time since. So I'm glad to say that has been fixed here. Now, one new bug that's been introduced with beta 5, at least for me, is that my brightness would actually randomly go to zero. This happened two different times and it had nothing to do with the heat. I wasn't outside or anything. I was just using my phone normally and the brightness just went to zero randomly, just all the way down to lowest brightness possible and I had to manually put it back up. I've also noticed multiple bugs with the phone application. As you can see here, it keeps the notification up saying that I have a missed call even though I already looked at it. I saw my missed call and it still shows I had the notification. I also had an instance, actually multiple instances where I would have a missed call and on the lock screen, the phone application would show the missed call two separate times and one would be like at the very top like glitched out and one would be in the normal spot so really odd bugs going on with the phone application nothing that really breaks the phone application or anything like that but just things that i have noticed throughout the past couple weeks i have also noticed that the mail application is a little bit off the notification badges still are not completely accurate sometimes the mail application i would open it up and it would just be a blank screen you wouldn't even be able to see anything and i've also had multiple people tell me that their mail application just freezes up and they can't even use it so definitely still some issues with the mail application unfortunately but it's not unusual usable it usually just takes a force close of the application and then it's back to normal and most of these bugs are also occurring on the iPhone 7 as well but I do have to say that the performance on the iPhone 7 and all the other phones as well is great so I haven't used the iPhone 7 a ton on iOS 13 I use it a lot in beta 1 and beta 2 but I really haven't used it since beta 2 so I've been picked it back up here with beta 5 and it's running great so the animations the fluidity the control center everything is running perfectly fine here on the iPhone 7 I will have a video coming specifically on the iPhone 7 pretty soon because I know a lot of you guys did request that but performance overall here in iOS 13 beta 5 aka public beta 4 has been tremendous especially on the iPad I was having a few issues with beta 4 but those did get fixed with beta 5 as far as the iPhone 10s max and the iPhone 10r feels about the same as beta 4 which is a good thing because beta 4 as I told you guys was the most stable release yet and then beta 5 did fix it especially with the multitasking issues that I had so I'm proud to say that beta 5 is even better than beta 4 which means it is going to be the best release yet the most stable release yet which should be the case i mean with ios 13 every single release should be the new best release because it should fix bugs and be more stable than the previous now as far as battery life goes battery life has also been great here on ios 13 beta 5 like i said i've used it every single day if we go into our settings and go to the battery now my battery health is at 94 percent, so you may be getting better battery life than me but i am still getting pretty good battery life so you can see there i have 10 hours and 14 minutes of screen off time or 10 hours of screen on time i should say and 14 minutes of screen off time uh, but of course i was charging it but i do notice that i get through pretty much the whole day without having to charge my phone and if i do have to charge it it's at like 9 p.m uh, when I have access to a charger or something like that. So it's been pretty good over the last 10 days. You can see I am using my phone. I am testing things out a lot. You can see there uh, the stats for the battery life. But like I said, it is pretty much lasting me the whole day. Uh, but I would say it's pretty much the exact same as beta 4. I've not noticed any improvements over beta 4 here in terms of battery life in beta 5. So that's pretty much it for the performance, the battery life, and the new features. So when can we expect iOS 13 beta 6 and public beta 5? So that's most likely coming either on tomorrow, which is going to be the 5th, or possibly even on the 6th here of August. And if it's not one of those two days, it'll probably be early next week, either the 12th, 13th, or 14th. I would imagine it'd be the 12th. But it seems that Apple is switching over to the weekly releases, so probably every Monday or Tuesday. But of course, you never really know with Apple. They like to switch it up, and they are pretty unpredictable with these beta releases. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. That was just my follow-up on iOS 13 beta 5, developer beta 5, and public beta 4. Overall, everything is pretty great. It is the best, most stable release yet, as expected. And there's really not too much to complain about at this point. I mean, for a beta, it is extremely, extremely stable. It's really a breath of fresh air after iOS 12 and iOS 11, which were not very great for me in terms of stability. So if you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, leave a comment down below with how this beta release has been treating your device. And of course, make sure you guys do stick around for my beta 6 coverage. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.